Hello, look, Mum No Computer here. Today we are about to do something that could be deemed as a little bit risque on this YouTube channel. So if you're not aware, Tom Ann has been working on a project called Stompenberg Effects. So first off, what is Stompenberg? Well, I'm presuming there is a basement somewhere in Germany, probably under Tom Ann, that is full of effects pedals that are wired into the internet. And these effects pedals are wired in in such a way that you can control them and also play things through them over the internet from the comfort of your own derriere on your own seat. And the other cool thing is it's free. You can literally go over on their site, type in Stompenberg. So first off, this is a music technology channel, so it wouldn't be right if we didn't actually try and have a look at the electronics. So it looks like there's been quite a bit of work that's gone into this. It looks like daughter boards that are being custom made that look pretty damn involved that sit on top of a uh, Raspberry Pi, it looks like. And it looks like one of these are connected to every single effects pedal. So it looks like then they plug in even smaller circuit boards that wire up basically custom to the effects pedal, be it needing to control a potentiometer. These smaller boards probably have digital potentiometers or, you know, solid state switches of some sort. So it looks like the setup is different building blocks, so it can all be customizable to whatever effects pedal uh, they're trying to wire it into. And as you can see, the switches and the potentiometers and stuff have been removed from the effects pedals. So now the effects pedals are remote control. And it doesn't look like it's been built with hot glue, which is always a bonus. And it looks like they fit quite a lot of pedals into a single rack. That's pretty mad. The audio input and output looks like they're all separately dealt by the single circuit boards each. You can see the jacks going into the Raspberry Pi thingamajiggy. All in all, it's a pretty impressive piece of kit. And to be honest, I've been wanting to do this video and now I've got an excuse to do it because they've asked me, they said, did you want to do a video? And I was like, yeah, I've got the perfect machine that I want to build for it. <laughs> However, there is a rather slight, large and bulbous elephant in the room. That is that, well, uh, I'm called Look Mum No Computer. And uh, yeah, I'm just saying now, this, this may offend you, but I'm just going to rip the plaster off and just get over and done with. Here it is. There's my laptop. So this is what I edit all the videos on. Unfortunately, I do not edit them all with a VHS home uh, editing suite and then post it via mail on a VHS over to YouTube. Sadly, I don't do that and I need to edit it on a computer. I'm really sorry. Anyway, in true look mum no computer style, this computer is sufficiently fudged. I'll just show you now. As you can see, the screen, a synthesizer dropped on top of it and smashed and I was like, you know what? I'm just not gonna bother anymore. Just gonna live with it. So I've got a little bit of an ingenious hack. It involves Velcro and another screen and yeah. Hey! <laughs> Problem averted. So now I've made it onto the Tom and Stompenberg. You can see the pictures that I was looking at just a mo ago, but yeah, I didn't realize there was that this many effects pedals actually. There's, there's more than 200 effects pedals wired up to the mainframe. Seems to make sense to try something that's analog because you're playing literally the effects pedal. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I think that this probably is analog, I'm guessing. That looks pretty analog. I mean, it's gotta be, I'm probably wrong actually. So it twists the knobs on it. And as far as I understand that literally affects the effects pedal in the rack in the basement somewhere in Germany. And you could play some guitars for it. Let's play jazz. No, we're not definitely not playing jazz. Let's play some metal. Ooh. Oh yeah. Ah, slight. Bypass it and bring it in. That's crazy. I'm just going to go back and try a different pedal. Green Russian Big Muff. Let's see if that comes up. Here we go. Establishing connection. Here we go. There is a tiny delay, but that just adds to the experience because this is really a pedal. You're listening to it over the internet being played in. Uh, record. Okay. Uh, use your microphone. Hello, how are we doing today? Oh, I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna play through my first. Microphone. Hello, how are we doing today? Oh, I'm gonna sing and I'm cool if there was like a, a webcam of the, uh, I guess it wouldn't really do much. Like you could imagine if they were robots that were twisting the knobs, that would be pretty mad. Uh, but you know, it's just that the amount of uh, uh, maintainable parts, if we were adding servos and stuff, I can imagine, yeah. Blue Sky, I've got one of these, so I sort of know what it sounds like. So let's, uh, let's give it a go. I'm a Barbie girl. 
in a Bobby world. Wee, Big Muff, here we go. Right, let's, uh, just a moment, please. Another customer is currently trying this product. We can't, we limit the playing time to five minutes so that every customer can use Stomp. That is really cool. This sort of ass, this is something that I was wondering about. I wonder if uh, in the future they'll end up doubling up popular pedals uh, for like a queuing system. That sort of answered my uh, questions, actually. Right, I'm just uploading a riff. Okay, let's see if this comes out. I use this POG on my modular synthesizer live, turn up the octaves and leave the dry, I'm just, I always just whack it on max, so let's see what happens. I'm mad to think that that's actually the pedal being played through. I've got one of these, I like it. Let's, let's give the MXR carbon copy a go, see what it sounds like on top of it. It runs away exactly the same as the pedal that I've got, which makes me think that it's probably pretty legit. Like, I haven't even got anything playing through it and I'm still able to play the feedback. It doesn't read the value all the time, but still, it's pretty damn cool. It works exactly like my pedal, so if I turn it on, it doesn't feed back, and then it feeds back. Funny, it actually works on its own. Start live mode. The delay on that is really not that bad at all, so I reckon I can play Simpson to it live. Oh yeah. So what we're listening to right now isn't directly uh, the synthesizer playing drums. The synthesizer is playing drums over the internet into Germany, uh, uh, playing through this MXR carbon copy on bypass, and then coming back through the internet, out of the interface, and into the camera. And yeah, that's mad. That's mad to think that. It's still playing. You can still see the flashing over there. It's still actually playing. So if we put it through some sort of distortion, uh, let's say the Harkili Dark Side. Normal. <laughs> that works. Juno 60 Chorus. Right, let's try the chorus, see what that's like. <laughs> Sounds like it. No flange. Okay, let's turn the flange on. <laughs> turn the regen up. Width. Get the speed a bit slower. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Within a few milliseconds, you can send sounds coming from there over to Germany, into a basement, into an effects pedal, and back into your ears. That's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. So what's next to ask? Well, I'm glad you asked that because it's this thing. <laughs> Yeah, I bashed this together yesterday evening with a bit of hot glue, a bit of plank of wood, an Arduino, and a mouse. Literally a mouse controller. The thing is, I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we could add some sort of modulation to this? And I was like, how can I do that? I'm not really any coder, I don't know anything like that, but I am very good with a hot glue gun. So this is what came out. And yeah, it is, it is basically a mouse on a piece of string. <laughs> so I'm gonna plug this in. Why not? Let's get this going. So you can see the mouse is controlling it. 
I'm gonna get over the top of the knob that I wanna adjust. And then what I do is I flick this switch. This permanently makes it select that knob. And uh, now I'm gonna plug it in. Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> Oh, that is so funny. Oh, that is amazing. All right, I'm going to play something for it now. Let's see what happens. I'm going to try an effect, actually, that's a little bit more noticeable, just so we can see uh, if it's going to work. So I'm going to go back to type. Let's try this. OK, I'm going to flick it on. Oh, this is so good. If only my old uh, music teacher could see me now. I wonder what the heck they would think. Right, let's try it on the regen on the delay of this. Right, let's do this. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Nice! Oh, that pedal's... This pedal's pretty good! Oh, I didn't know this pedal was actually, like... Sounds pretty good. So, let's finish up with a classic. Oh, yeah! This thing's awesome! <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty damn cool. <laughs> That's... That was a, That was actually a lot of... That was a... That was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I can't close that. So if you were interested in that, go and check it out over on the Tom Ann website, Stompenberg. You can literally test, uh, I, I think it's like 200 or so pedals. It's pretty mad. And if you want to make one of these to control this, then yeah, go crazy. All you need is a switch to sort of latch the button. You could even use a bit of tape. So, so yeah. Anyway, go and check it out. I've been looking at my computer. Have a lovely time. <laughs>